In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of using selecting tools in Photoshop and also how to copy and paste parts of images into other images. So the first thing is the selecting tools. Photoshop is a program where everything is made up of pixels. They're made up of these little boxes of color, these little squares of color. And uh, Photoshop is there for you and will do whatever you want it to do. Um, but you have to tell it which pixels you want to change or manipulate or mess with. And you do that with your selecting tools. So there are se several selecting tools. You can find them towards the top of the toolbox up here. Uh, the first one that I'm going to show you is the rectangular marquee tool or the rectangle tool. And that works just by you click and drag and click and drag and you can select an area here. I'll delete it so you can see that's the area that I selected. I'm going to control Z to undo that. Um, and you just click and drag. If you would like to have a perfect circle, sorry, a perfect square, hold down the shift button and then click and drag. If you click and hold on the rectangular marquee tool, you get to some more tools in a little submenu. So there is the elliptical marquee tool. And the elliptical marquee tool works kind of the same way. You just click and drag and click and drag. Uh, again, if you want a perfect circle, you hold down shift first and you will get a perfect circle. Here, I'll delete that and undo it so you can see. Um, so again, if you want a perfect square or a perfect circle, hold down shift first. It's very important that you hold down shift first and then you click and drag. There are these other two, two uh, marquee tools, single row and single column, but those just select one row of those tiny little pixels. And I've been using Photoshop since like 1995 and I literally have never used them. So they're not that useful generally to a photographer. The next set of tools is the lasso tools. Uh, with the lasso tools, the first one is the regular lasso, then you have the polygonal and the magnetic. So the regular lasso works just by you click and drag and let go and it creates a shape. So yes, you could try to click and drag around a shape, but it's not going to be that accurate unless you're super good with a mouse, but most people aren't. Uh, so that is one way that you could select something, but it's not really the best way. If you are trying to select around a building or something with straight lines, there is a great tool called the polygonal lasso tool, and it works by making straight lines and angles. So you click and let go, 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 and double click at the end. You double click at the end. And again, that makes those straight lines and angles. If you ever start doing it and you start getting into trouble and you say, oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanna use one of these other tools over here. Why won't it let me do that? And you, uh, the trick is to double click to close it and then use control D on your keyboard to deselect um, your selection. And in fact, anytime with any tool that you have a selection that you don't want to be there anymore, you control D to deselect. Okay. The next tool that I'm going to show you is the magnetic lasso tool. The magnetic lasso tool looks for differences between pixels. And so you start at the edge of something. So here we have some kind of orangish pixels next to some bluish pixels. And I can click and see how even if I pull away, it wants to stick to that edge. I help it along by clicking every once in a while. 
But this is a way that you can go around a selection much more quickly if it is different from the background. If this giraffe was against an orange background, this would be much harder to do. But because the background is pretty different, I can go around the edge. Okay, now I'm going to speed up a little bit. You can see what happens if you don't click and you're not quite as careful, it doesn't work as well. But, and here we double click at the end. So bye bye giraffe. But if you double click at the end, uh, it closes that selection. And again, to get rid of this selection, I press Control D. Uh, the last two tools I want to show you is the quick selection tool. This is a somewhat newer tool. It's been in, just in the past couple versions of Photoshop. And it, you kind of paint around um, and it will do its best job to select that area. Sometimes it does a great job, sometimes it doesn't. Here I went into the sky and it selected this entire sky area. In a moment, I'll show you how to get out of a problem like that. So that is the quick selection tool. I'm going to control D to undo my selection and show you the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool looks for um, pixels that are the same color as the pixel that you are clicking on. So if I click on here, it will select all of the blue pixels that are touching that area um, that are similar. Down here, it decided that these blue pixels are just too light, so it didn't select them. Here in this spot, you can see I uh, clicked on the dark brown, so it uses just the dark brown area. Here, here, I can select this area. These are all touching because they're contiguous. So. If we think of the United States, there are 50 United States, 48 of which are contiguous. Contiguous means touching. The two states that are not contiguous are Alaska and Hawaii because they do not physically touch the other 48 states. So when the box up here contiguous is checked, it will only select pixels that are similar to that, that are um, touching each other. So it doesn't select the pixels up here, even though they are somewhat similar in color. If I unclick contiguous, now when I click in basically the same place, I will get all pixels that are similar to that color, um, even if they're not touching each other. All right. So, uh, there's a trick that you can do with the magic wand. It's called the magic wand inverse trick. With the magic wand inverse trick, it works when there is a solid color background. Instead of going and trying to go all the way around with some other selecting tool and get the hat, what I can do is select the background. So actually, because contiguous isn't clicked, didn't work as well. So you want contiguous clicked. I can select the background. So right now I have the background selected, but I don't really want a, a big black square with a hat cut out of it, right? Um, what I really want is the hat selected. So once I magic wand that solid background, I go up to select inverse, and now I have just the hat selected. I can use the move tool to move it around or whatever I like, but now you see just the hat is selected. Okay, so let's go back over here. You can add to and take away from selections. And the way you do that is with the Alt and the Shift key. So let's say I have a circle selected and I want to add some more circles to it. Once I have it selected, so this is after I have a selection, I hold down the shift key and see how that turns to a plus. Now, wherever else I select will be added to that selection. 
and it works with other tools too. If I wanted to add in, let's go to the rectangle. If I want to add in some more, you can see that it is adding all of these selections together. So if I press the delete key, you can see the areas that were selected. The same thing is true uh, of the Alt key in terms of subtracting. So if I have this area selected and I want less selected, I can hold down Alt and I can remove areas from that selection. Let me press Control Delete D to deselect. When is this really useful? Well, remember before when we used the quick selection tool and we got this giraffe, but then in the end we got some of the sky as well over here. We got this entire sky. Um, let me get the neck. Uh, and we didn't want the sky. If you hold down Alt, it turns into a minus. And now I can remove or subtract the sky from the selection. So you can always add to a selection and take away from a selection, holding down shift to add to it using any of the tools, selection tools, and then hold down alt if you want to take it away. The final thing that I want to show you is how to copy and paste. Over here, we have this hat selected already. To copy, I can go to Edit Copy, or I can just press Control C, go over to my other picture, and then go to Edit Paste, or I can go to Control V. Use this Move tool up here, and I can move the hat on top of the giraffe.